All right, guys, Missing Links here. Uh, I have a great one for you today. We are hacking contact, right? So check it. Uh, this is the OG patch that you can get for free from a magic sound. I just got it from Contact Hub. It's pretty nice, um, but it's quite limited. You'll notice it's only got an octave key range. So let's change that. Uh, in the mapping editor, um, yeah, this wrench, the wrench, it's it's gold. Mapping editor. So these are basically the samples. These are low velocity ones. These are high velocity ones. We're going to take all of them. We're going to extend the key range to the whole keyboard. Awesome. Way better. Okay, moving onward. Wave editor. Um, let's hit this expert button. We can see stuff better that way. Uh, all these different samples. Right, these waves. So let's loop this. I would like it to loop forever. So let us do that. We will go from here to let's say like here or so. Looks like it could work. Um, and then let's add just a little bit of a crossfade. And we will zoom in here with this button, the loop edit, and then that will let us uh, match these guys up. So we went a little bit too far. Yeah, we're about perfect there. You can even go like sample by sample and make sure you're like perfect. So there's no kind of click hardly or anything. Now it is a little bit different on each side of this loop. It's not gonna be perfect, but uh, we need to copy this looping over to the other samples. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select it this way, right? You can just do it as a range, but it's gonna display the one you click on last, which is the one we just edited because I just clicked that. Uh, and the reason is because it's going to copy the one you just clicked to all the other ones that are highlighted, right? So I clicked on this gear and I said, let's push out to all the selected zones, a copy of the current loop region. Now, uh, it does not copy over the loop state. Not sure why, but you'll notice that this is off. So we need to turn that on by hand for each one. Uh, it, it's pretty lame. Uh, native, get on this, fix it please, thank you. Bam, okay, so now they're all looping. Now let's just check these other guys because these, these are the same sample. These I think are just like filtered or something. I think they're based on the same sample. The reason is because if you enhance them, you'll notice we're also sample perfect for like all these guys. That you wouldn't necessarily expect if they were different samples. Um, you see we are a little bit off. That's, uh, maybe we can improve it a little bit. Not really though, but yeah, there. That's because uh, it is different. It's like, it is, you know, it's an organic instrument. So it will repeat, uh, but it'll repeat slightly differently each time. Um, so we'll just get it as best as we can. Uh, this is pretty good. We've got a crossfade, so that will help. Um, yeah, and so we could even take that one and map it out to the one that was similar. So again, you click on this gear and you just copy over Cool, so now we have made this to this that last forever. Let's take a listen. Yeah, the, the tone changes a lot. So I'm actually gonna do a shorter loop length um, just cause I think it'll be more consistent tone during that time. And we'll do that. Uh, again, you just do this, bam, get that. Better copy that out. We oh, I did not copy that out. I was not highlighting these guys. We'll copy that out. Bam. Nice. That's really really good. Cool. So this sounds excellent. Um, we have made this be able to loop forever now. That's really cool. Uh, so let's get out of the wave editor. The next thing I want to do is we can play with some effects. I'm not actually going to add effects in the end, but I'll show you how. Um, so like say this guy. Right, 
right? So these are effects that will actually affect each voice individually, right? Um, you're the script editor. So we are in the specifically um, right group insert effects, group insert effects. Uh, so this is part of the group kind of section, but this will be on a per voice basis. That's really important to know because the instrument buses, insert effects, send effects, all of those are going to be on everything all at once. All right? But these guys are on a per voice basis. Um, and they're also the only ones that you can add like these LFOs and stuff to, which is kind of weird. Um, so check it. Uh, yeah, they only, they're only ones with these mod sources, right? So if we add something, uh, we could change it. What I'm going to change is actually volume. So this is the mod for the volume. If we were to add a filter, which might actually also do, um, we can add a filter and then we can do the mods for the filter as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mod to CC2. And the reason I'm going to do CC2, well, this is the initial value. So this is what it's going to default to before it starts actually getting MIDI data for that. And I want it to be at 127 because I want it to be full scale. CC2 is the breath controller. So this is going to be like I'm blowing in a breath controller full out until I've actually given it some breath data. So it's going to start full out. So this is actually not going to change anything just yet. Um, let's also do this to the volume. So we're going to control both the volume and this filter cut off a little bit um, so that it gets brighter as I breathe harder. So now check it. Still just playing normally, but as soon as I breathe, excellent, right? Uh, way, 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 way better. So highly recommend breath controllers, um, some of them. Uh, this is my breath controller. It is amazing. So uh, I've I tried out a couple ones. Um, I wanted one that would work with the keyboard as opposed to like one of those clarinetty ones. So unless you played clarinet or something, I would not recommend one of those. Uh, but this is also a bite controller. I guess you can bite down it. It'll also detect tilting your head and nodding your head. And it does all of that in here. All right, so I'm not gonna change this. But you can see the green is uh, it biting. The red is it blowing and you can calibrate like the bend and of these curves like all sorts of stuff it, it goes really deep uh, but i have it calibrated where i like so i'm not gonna change it okay moving onward so we've now made this breath controlled i'm also going to decrease the velocity sensitivity because once something's breath controlled it's kind of a little bit weird to do it with velocity too it just doesn't respond how you want because um, if you press the velocity lightly, then you can blow full out. It won't be that loud. And then the next one, if you play the velocity hard, it'll be like super loud. Uh, so it's just a little bit more consistent if you just keep the velocity sensitivity quite low or turn it off. Um, okay, so we've tricked this out. We've made it be able to play across the keyboard. What could possibly be next? Well, uh, this legato button doesn't work. In fact, it's always on. You can't turn it off. You can't make it so you can play chords or anything like that. And it doesn't actually change the functionality at all, right? So we're gonna not like fix that. We're gonna add badass legato functionality. So the legato functionality for most contact instruments comes from a built-in script, right? So this is the, oops, the script editor here, right? So what we're looking at here is the script editor. These are different scripts. We can just go in the preset scripts and there's a bunch of them, right? You can add in an arpeggiator, right? You can add in all sorts of stuff pretty easily actually into these things. Um, but right now we're just going to do a unison and portamento. So there's one thing that we need to do to get it to show up, because you'll notice we don't see it. Uh, so to get it to show up, we need to edit it and we can just do it right at the top here beneath this on thing, but we need this make perf view. And if we click apply, now all of a sudden, oh man, we've got a whole nother portamento page where we can like turn on the portamento, turn it from chord mode into legato mode. Freaking crazy, like do unison, right? Right now we've got unison, it's great. It's so, so great. Um, so moving onward from here, we actually are gonna fix this. Uh, 
I don't know how useful this is going to be for everybody. So if you want to, you know, forward past this, but basically we're going to leave out this script from here because it wasn't implemented right. And so we need to get rid of this portamento thing and this legato thing. This is also something uh, from that. Uh, the rest of this is like the attack, the case, stain, release knobs. This is this chorus button and like this reverse. All this can be deleted. That's the same as this can be deleted. Um, oops. Uh, basically, we're going to delete everything up to that point. We're going to start from the bottom. Um, there's, this is also, this is the expert view. Expert view is this. So you can go even deeper into this portamento thing. Um, right? We can even do it on this side, right? Go into expert view. And then we can, like, well, not here, but you can actually control the key ranges uh, on this one. Right? And you can probably get this to show up too, but you can, like, uh, if you have key switches, like a lot of contact instruments have key switches, you would want to get the key switches out of the range because you don't want like when you hit a key switch, changing it from like staccato to legato or something for that to register in the pitch bend of the portamento, right? So you can get the range outside of where the key switches are. Um, here I'm going to keep it because there's no key switches all the way the, the whole thing. But you know, when you have the portamento on, uh, if you have this time and you have portamento on, then you'll have this pitch bend. You don't want the key switches as part of that. Cool. So we've got portamento available to us. We're going to keep deleting this. Um, this is again, that expert mode. Uh, let's just delete that because uh, it exists in this script now. So we don't need that. Um, this voice menu is also a similar thing from that. Uh, and this is also from that. Now we want the reverb, the chorus on. This is the attack, the case, the stain, release, and basically everything above this. I'm going to keep this end on because this is, uh, it's basically going to end the initialized state. We're going to just go to basically the beginning and um, all that to the can be deleted. And then this will be the end of the initialized state. It would give an error if you didn't have this. All right, so we just hit apply. And now you'll notice uh, this legato button's gone. That was one of the things that we deleted. But this attack, the case, it's in release, all of this will still work. All right, see how that just kind of came in with a long attack? Um, usually you want a short attack when you have, or pretty short attack when you have uh, a breath controller going. Yes, yeah, so now we've got this. We've got the unison voices. We can turn portamento on. We can, more importantly, play chords. All right, so we can play chords or we can turn it so it's in non-chord mode. We've got uh, several different portamento modes, right, that have slightly different behavior on the sample pickup. Like, does it switch samples to the new, sam like the new played note or does it use the same sample and just pitch bend it? Uh, which is what legato mode is. And uh, yeah, the Fornamento. It puts us on relative. Relative tends to sound better to me uh, in general. And usually for wind instruments, something short like this. Maybe a little bit longer than that. But not too long, you know. Yeah, probably around 30 is pretty good. Um, yeah, you can do all the, the everything uh, with the unison. Okay, well, that's all I have for you. Um, and yeah, you could trick out more stuff, like I said, like add arpeggiators, other things like that. Um, sky's really the limit. So obviously this instrument was okay before, uh, but now it's way, way better. Uh, so I will save this and send it to you guys and probably send it to a Magic Studios. Um, kudos for them to putting together this instrument. It sounds really nice. Uh, yeah, I just like the changes I made. So love you guys very much. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this was useful. If you haven't gotten into contact, it's actually quite powerful. Uh, so I'll probably do some more episodes on contact. Um, yeah, ask me any questions you have. And um, I will say that some scripts will like override things, like random things. Like when we did the expanding the key range, some scripts will like 
have all the stuff built into it and what notes register to things. It'll override the mapping editor. Right. So sometimes you'll like be like, why isn't this changing and letting me like extend the key range? And it's just the it's the answer is it's something that they did in the script. Right? These scripts can get quite complex. Um, so I don't recommend deleting things from your scripts very often. Uh, this was just a very simple script, and I happened to know what I could delete and what I was trying to retain. Uh, okay, love you guys very much. Uh, again, uh, context better when you get under the hood. All right, so. Uh, enjoy it. Up your love of your, your, your productions and everything. And I love you. All right. Links out.